Welcome to the show that is the coldest above all others. I'm Doc Martinez, and this is season two of the Ice Bath Baby podcast. Can you believe that? Season two, guys. I'm so excited. Hey, fall practices have started, and that can only mean that school starts really soon. Like, next week soon. Like, August 10th, to be exact. That's right. Cross-country football and volleyball have all started up. Sophomores, juniors, and seniors got to pick up their schedules yesterday and today. And freshmen had orientation. So we are in full swing, Bulldogs. So I'm going to have some more news next week, right? But today I want to get right to it because I have a very special guest with me today. And we talked for a long time. And we had a great time. And this has been my this is gonna be my longest podcast to date so far. But you're going to hear from my high school athletic trainer who got me started in this profession. So let's get to it. All right. All right, guys. So I promised you that I was gonna have a special guest uh, to start off season two. And I, I'm delivering. He's here. Uh, this guy is very special to me. And he should be special to y'all, too, because he's the one who got me started in athletic training uh, many years ago. <laughs> I'm not going to give away my age or his age. Well, y'all know my age, but I'm not going to give away his age. But um, all right. So, Billy, uh, let everyone know uh, your, your name and what your profession is and, and how you know me. All right, I'm Billy Newsom. I'm a licensed athletic trainer, and I have 38 years experience, 33 in the schools, and more or less the last five working for a, a sports medicine clinic out of the local hospital in our county. I'd already been kind of volunteering for some of their uh, outreach, and when I retired, they hired me. Yeah. And so I, I went from, and it was PRN, which is work yeah. is needed. So I went from working... 14 to 18 hour days, six to seven days a week to working 14 hours, three days a week and loving it. Yeah, I hear you. Absolutely I, uh, loving it. Yeah. I, I uh, when I was in Frisco, I did some PR in work in the summertime just to make it's the time fun. pass. And I, what, the, what I liked about it is I got to choose my hours. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> yep. You could pick, they didn't pick for you. Uh, <laughs> and you know how much you get paid per hour. Yeah. You know what you're going to get. It's, it's nice. Yeah. Uh, well, I know Raul. Raul was with uh, another guy who's unfortunately not with us still, but Renee Flores. And I was told about him before I got to Corpus Christi Carroll High School. And when I got to Carroll, at that time, I was the fourth athletic trainer hired in CCISD. At that time, they had five high schools. We had five high schools and 11 junior highs that we took care of. And I was number four. A friend of mine ended up being number five. And then eventually we got assigned to the schools, but I wanted Carol from the beginning. I had taken care of an athlete uh, at the college we went to that had gone to Carol. I knew about the school. I knew about the program uh, and was lucky enough to get assigned there. I had heard about two student trainers that were the everything guys at Carol uh, that were juniors and they were called Frick and Frack. <laughs> yes. And my introduction to Frick and Frack was pretty fun. A guy named Larry Brunt, the yeah. head athletic trainer in Corpus, introduced us. And he goes, good luck with these two. <laughs> and I saw that I saw in both of them the potential to be very, very good. You know, we joke a lot. and We have a, a good time together. But uh, they were very, very eager to please and willing to work. And that's what I needed. They were great for a uh, and I've thanked them numerous times. And I know he's thanked me. We have a good relationship. and We're good friends. Uh, but it was a great experience for me to have two very on the spot student athletic trainers. They really helped me. And if you, if you realize our situation, it's not like some of the training rooms you've probably worked in, yeah. uh, student trainers listening. We were in a cage, literally, we were in a cage in yep. the boys varsity dressing room and we still had shoulder pads and helmets stored in there. Yeah. I had a small table and a cabinet. And a 60-watt light bulb. It was dark. It was dirty. And it was in a locker room. 
Yeah, I remember all that. It was awesome. Yeah, uh, it was uh, it was crazy. Do you know my was. first act as an athletic trainer at Carroll High School? No. You remember it? No. Y'all were a part of it, and then I got brutally just corrected, corrected and strung out and vilified, and I was a bad guy because I threw away the Kramer Jesus. <laughs> they had a 45 or 58 pound drum yeah. of Kramer Jesus sitting out in the hall that had some tongue depressors in it and it had sand and mm-hmm. hair yeah. and probably some animals. And I think we lost a student <laughs> trainer in there one time. It was bad. <laughs> yeah. So I threw that out. My yeah. next thing was to get rid of water bottles. Mm-hmm. Because the water bottles had long straws on them. And what do you think an athlete does with a long straw on yes. a water bottle? Heck yeah, put your mouth on it, baby. Oh, yeah. And they <laughs> were passing it back and forth. And I also stopped a practice that they had. And I don't even know if you recognize this or noticed. Oh, poor Carol. I stopped a little practice that they had of uh, sharing mouthpieces. Oh, oh, I didn't know that one. Oh, yeah. I told them that we had plenty. Yeah. And please do not grab your friend's mouthpiece if yours gets knocked out. And <laughs> kind of close your mouth when you're hitting people so it won't happen. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> or, or or strap it onto the helmet face mask, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, amazing. And we remember yeah. we had those special made ones from Dr. Morris. Oh, yeah. I remember so that. So they had no excuse. Did that. Yeah. yeah that, that cost us several hours of our life having to come up and make mouthpieces. Yeah, I almost forgot about that. Yeah, they were um, good. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. So, um, so, all right, uh, so listeners, uh, we heard somebody in the background there. Uh, who you yeah, got this there? is my wife, Stacy. Stacy News. Yes, yes, Stacy. You will enjoy Stacy's laugh. Hi. So, hi. Yes, hi, Stacy. So, y'all, you guys, like, I've known y'all since day one. Right. right. When y'all came in at Carroll, y'all just got married. If I was, if if I'm not mistaken, right? Absolutely. Right. Just got married. Yeah. Been married. February February 14th, right? 15th. 15th. Oh yeah. 86. Yeah. And so. Um, we yeah, think it's gonna so, work out. <laughs> you think so? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, day one, and let me tell you what, man, we've had some some great times. Um, so thanks for those kind words. Like oh, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't know some of that stuff. That was kind of refreshing to me. But, <laughs> um, you know, like I said, like I was said at the very beginning, like, you know, you've been very instrumental to me. Like, I, I feel like people are going to listen to this and they're going to say, this is where Doc gets his sense of humor from. <laughs> uh, because because I'm always cracking jokes. Right. And like, I, yeah. I'm king you of have jokes, to. Right? Yeah, you have to to so, keep the atmosphere light and what you see. And yeah. I always, you know, I'm sure that y'all set your training room up very similar. I always wanted the training room to kind of be a sanctuary, yeah, so that they can come in there and get away from the real intense coaching. Uh, one of the questions that I wanted to make sure that we got to, Stacey, you reminded me the first experience that I had with uh, you two. Yeah, uh, I was covering a soccer game, mm-hmm. and an athlete gets hurt. And he was a little excited, young Hispanic athlete. And he starts, he had rolled an ankle Mm -hmm. and he starts telling me some things in a language that I didn't quite understand. Yeah. So I asked my two student trainers who came out with me, we all trotted out when they stopped play, you know, the FIFA referee that I can't stand, but he stopped play, let me come out and look at the athlete and the athletes, like I said, excited and trying to tell me now I know he was telling me that his ankle hurts I, I know it's managed to be dangerous and yeah die, but back then I didn't unfortunately and so I asked them and they were very professional about it on the spot with the athlete and we turned to the referee and he translated and we got off the field but after we got the athlete taken care of they pulled me to the side and it was the first time I realized that student trainers could correct the head trainer yeah because I got a very intense lesson on language Uh and uh, the last names and ability to speak different languages. (laughs) Yeah. And was told that just because our names are Martinez and Florence, (laughs) please don't think that we can speak Spanish. Oh yeah. Our parents do, our grandparents do, but we don't. Yeah. So I, I learned that. uh, Yeah. That, that is something that, that I have fought all my life, believe it or not. Uh, 
you, well, you, Miguel. You would think, I mean, you would think, right? Martinez, oh. hey, come on, that's it, right? That's it, that's it. Well, I've, you I've know, of the, of the five of us, the absolute best Spanish speaker was the German. In Corpus. In Corpus, Tom Braun. Tom Braun, yeah. yeah. At London, is that where he is now? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll talk about him. Yeah. I, I love Tom. He, he was one of the big influences on me in my career. He grew up in Eagle Pass uh-huh. and learned Spanish growing up. But, you know, the border town that's from necessary is from Kentucky, and they moved when he was young. But he yeah. grew up in Eagle Pass and then went to Zay and I back then in Kingsville. And one. And, yeah, and one. And knew, you know, knew Spanish. And so when they would come and, you know, the, we'd be, when all the trainers were in the event, like a district track meet, they would all come hang out and see us. And they would go to Miguel, they'd go to Larry, they'd go to everybody, and then Tom would be the one that would speak Spanish to them. The yeah. German guy that's, you know, blonde hair. <laughs> yeah. So, Tom, I, yeah. I love that guy too, man. He, he, he's, he's another awesome. big, he was a big influence on my life too, man. Like, yeah. he, he's, he's a character. He, um, he's just solid. Him, him and Nora yeah. are great. Yeah. Um, all right. So, man, we went off on a way big ta- tangent there, but that's okay. I like it. I love that's it. Fun. Um, I'll give you some so, editing work. Here. No, I am. I'm not editing that. I'll tell you what. <laughs> so uh, let's go on to this one. Um, okay. So everybody knows what college uh, I attended. Well, most everybody does. Cause I mean, I have, I have a big flag of it in my, in my office, right? There's a flag. There's a, there's a banner. I got some championship towels when they went to the national championship game. Absolutely. Um, you have to. But I got turned on to that school by you. Right. Right. And, and I've told people this, this, this whole story, but first give us, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to uh, put uh, a couple of questions together here. So which college am I talking about? Tell us that. And then um, what degree you hold from there. And then wh- why did you choose to do athletic training? At okay. That? Okay. I went to Sam Houston state university. Obviously y'all know that because Raul yeah. was, uh, yeah. is a Sam Houston state grad. You know, all know this, yep, the proper spelling of Bearcat is okay. with a K. Okay, yes. it's got to be a K, not a C. I always tell have that wrong. Please correct everyone. And yes. there are lots of Bearcats around here, and I have numerous opportunities to correct that. Yes, uh, they don't. They don't like it. But <laughs> I have a bat, bat, I have a Bachelor of Arts in teaching degree. I was had a major in physical education with an emphasis on athletic training with a minor in biology and I got a teaching certificate, a uh, lifetime teaching certificate and I'm licensed to teach secondary biology, physical education. And later I took the health exit exam so I can teach health also. Yeah. So about, I can teach uh, anything in the biology field. I've taught anatomy and physiology before mm-hmm. pre AP biology. Sports. So sports medicine, yeah. first aid, uh, you know, how cool. to, how to take your shoes off before you enter a training room. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've taught a few things. Yeah, I got you. So, so before you get that, that second part of that question. Um, so I, uh, uh, I also, well, I don't, I started out with the bachelor of arts in teaching and I was a sophomore and uh, my advisor pulled me in and he says, Hey, got some bad news. They're doing away with the bachelor of arts program. Everything's changing over to bachelor of science. So what are you going to do? And I was like, well, I guess I'll get a bachelor of science. And he said, well, the only bad thing about it is it's not going to be tied into teaching. So you're going to have to apply to teaching school uh, in order to get that. And I had already taken some education courses. uh, But I was like, so after I get my degree, then I have to do the teaching school. He's like, yeah, I was like, no, then I'm not going to do it. And so I just got my bachelor of science. Right. And so I had my bachelor of science in kinesiology with an emphasis in athletic training. Um, and then no, basically yeah, a BS. Yeah, BS. That's right. So, so, <laughs> I when I, so when I started working, when I took my first job, I didn't teach. Right. Because it was in Corpus. Right. right. Back in Corpus. We didn't teach. And matter of fact, those guys still don't teach over there in that in, in Corpus. And so um, I uh, uh, did that for seven years. And then when I moved up to the Dallas area, I had to get I had to actually had to go back to school to get my my teaching certificate. And I was not right. happy. I was not happy. I was like, man, this is lame. But yeah. yeah, anyway. So, all right. So second half of that question was, why did you get into athletic training? Okay. 
I got into athletic training, kind of interesting. Uh, uh, from the time I started football in the seventh grade, and uh, we didn't have pee wee football. I'm old. We didn't have all the pee wee. I played baseball when I was young. We didn't have everything else, mm-hmm. but. I got, fo- got to play football when it rolled around in seventh grade, was excited about it, hurt my knee, and I kept playing, kept hurting it, and ended up having a knee surgery. And so I sat out my junior year with the idea uh, of returning to play my senior year because I knew that we had a chance to be good uh, in football my senior year. And Huntsville had a very solid reputation in high school football at the time. They were very, very yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, in three years that I attended school there, I went my sophomore, junior, senior, year there in the three years we only lost five games we were very very good and it was three games my sophomore year one each my junior year and one my senior year yeah so we 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 were very very good so i was trying to get to where i could play on that team and ended up not being able to i didn't get my knee strong enough and so i was going to be out of it and i had kind of volunteered that junior year while i was hurt as a student trainer i was the, you know around the team still uh i helped a little bit uh, learned to tape, learned about the injury stuff. My plan originally before this was to go to medical school, become an orthopedic, and then work back into sports because I like medicine, I like sports, and I thought the best job in the world would be to be a team physician. Yeah, and wanted to go, you know, possibly college or pro level. That was my thinking at the time. Doc Wilson, who was a head athletic trainer at Sam Houston, uh, my mentor, you were you know, mentor too. Oh yeah. He was our guy uh, that taught us what we know. Uh, Doc Wilson had taken care of me in high school because we didn't have an athletic trainer at my high school. And he was generous enough and nice enough. Anybody in the county and surrounding area, most of the schools didn't have athletic trainers. And on Saturday mornings, after he finished treating the college athletes, he would treat, or sometimes even at the same time, he would treat the high school athletes. Coaches or parents would bring them in and he was always very kind. Would take care of them. Never charged them. Never gave yeah. them a hard time. He was very generous with his time and his knowledge. Yeah, his I didn't know he did. That's cool. He did it all the time, and I've actually done that in this county. I'm, people know me because I do that. I'll open my training room, or you know, I'll I'll take care of the opposing team's athlete if they don't have anybody. Yeah. Any athletic trainer would do that. I'm not doing anything that any of us wouldn't do. But when I moved to Wise County, uh, there weren't many athletic trainers up here. There were a few and a couple of men taken care of by clinics. But as people got to know me, then I started taking care of them. But that's basically what got me into athletic training was seeing what happened in the training room, watching athletes get better. And the best part of our job, 100%, best part of our job is helping an athlete get back to doing what they love to do. Yes. You know, if they love to be a bull rider or barrel racer or NASCAR driver or pit crew at NASCAR or high school football player or middle school gymnastics athlete or cheerleader, drill team, doesn't matter. Get those kids and people healthy and active doing what they love to do. And if you had a little bitty part in it, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. I agree totally. Yeah, I agree totally. People ask me a lot, what's my favorite part of it? And I was like, when 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 you see that injury or that athlete come in with an injury you help them you with their treatment their rehab and you get them back on the court to where they were before they were hurt like that's the best that's one of the best things it's awesome it's awesome it's also nerve-wracking because you're you know (laughs) how's it gonna go what's gonna happen i remember my first acl that came back and he was a very very good athlete but i was very concerned because again my first one I had no idea how he would do. And they actually didn't repair his ACL. They just left him deficient. We braced him. And yeah. he came back and did great. Yeah. But, well, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So, um, you know, like uh, I don't have one of those, you know, like I was an athlete and then I became a student athletic trainer kind of like you did. And I don't, I don't know how if you listened to a lot of my summer series, but I was interviewing a lot of my former student trainers from Lone Star who have gone on to get, you know, have a career now. And, and all of them were athletes who came over to the athletic training side because they got hurt, had a, you know, either career ending or, or if it wasn't career ending, they just saw what was going on 
in the training room and I was like, wow, this is really cool. You know, right. that, we, that we have this and we can do this. And so they got involved with that. Uh, mine was more of just, uh, I just was service oriented and, you know, I was a, I was a manager in middle school at Tom Brown uh, for the teams. Cause we didn't have, you know, athletic training. We didn't even know what athletic training was back then. And right. so we did, we were like the right hand man, you know, like you said, the jack of all trades for pretty much every mm-hmm. sport in the middle school. And then when we came up to the high school, that first year when I was a sophomore and uh, you had mentioned Larry Brunt, he was tra- He was the only one there in Corpus at the time. Right. And he would travel around to the schools each day of the week. He'd go to a different school. And uh, he kind of, he kind of got, got us interested in it and took us under his wing a little bit. And then that's when you came in our junior year and, you know, pretty much the rest is history. But um, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Uh, you know, to hear, how you got started because like, like I said, I feel like a lot of athletic trainers fit that mold, you know, they, yep. they were former well, athletes. And, and you nailed it. Athletic trainers need to be service oriented. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's part of our nature. You know, it's the nature to help and to want to assist when somebody's hurting or somebody's, you know, injured, yeah. sick, whatever. It's just, you know, it, it's kind of part of what we do. It's not just the job. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it carries over into our personal life. Absolutely. I think, at least it, I think it does. It, because, it, it, it should. Yeah, because uh, I was, like, everybody's always asking me, man, like, like take care of yourself, dude. Like, you're always taking care of everybody else. Take care of yourself. I was like, I will. I'm, I'm, but, you know, I'll, I'll get to myself. But I got to take care of make sure these other people are okay. You know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Say something. Get ready. Okay. <laughs> get ready. Hold on. Okay. I, I have a piece of advice for all of y'all that – do put in multiple hours every week, years and years and years of athletic training. Mm -hmm. And you do work yourselves to death. You don't get the proper care that you should for yourself. Yeah. Don't do what your kid, what you tell your kids to do. We are experiencing this right now. Yeah. Please take care of yourselves. Please don't work your, like, just yourselves to death. Try yeah. to make some time. Uh, we did this for 33 years of him working full time, all the time to retired. And then all of a sudden we we're like, now what do we do? Because, you know, our son's out of the house. He was married. And so then we had to learn how to live together. Mm-hmm. And I was home. We're now home together, but it that worked out. But then also we've experienced, or he has experienced a lot of health issues. Yeah. Based on not taking good care of himself during yeah. that time. No, and 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 I hear you, and I and I agree with you, and I I've always told people this, like, and I feel like nurses, even some doctors. And athletic trainers, like really anybody in the healthcare profession, like we're the worst patients. Yes, right? we all are. Because so. we all take care of everybody else and then neglect ourselves. Like, I mean, I, I, I uh, last week we had youth football camp and it was three, three days out in the hot sun from like five to seven. And I don't know what it, I don't know what it was, but I came home all three days, just beat down. And it was just youth football camp. All I did was stand around. And I was beat down, and I and I, I looked at Sonia and I said, I said, babe, year thirty three is going to be hard. I was like, I'm aching, like I am, like my knee is killing me. Um, I think I told y'all a little bit about my knee issue. All my student trainers know about my knee issue that I had. Right. Uh, you know, I'm looking at a replacement probably in the next several years, and yep. so I'm just like, man, <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, crazy. Well, just. You know, take take that kind of in consideration. And if you would tell your kids to ice and elevate and blah, 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 try to take care of yourself and do that, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you need to be off of it a little bit, use crutches. Don't care what people think. Yeah. Because really, they are not thinking that. It's you're thinking that. Yeah. It's a pride thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. One of my uh, last one of my last games in year 19, I did 20 years at Bridgeport. We're talking about places that I've worked. I was at Corpus Christi Carroll for 
uh, for TEA purposes, too, it was a year and a half because mm-hmm. I started in December. I was at Richardson Berkner, L.B. Berkner High School for 11 years and then Bridgeport for 20. Mm-hmm. Year 19, my head coach is on crutches because his knee was hurt. He actually hurt it in a bowling incident. Yeah. I won't name him because he would hate that. <laughs> yeah. He'd be very embarrassed right now. I know who he is. <laughs> yeah. It's a bowling thing. Yeah. And then uh, it happens, you know, that's one of those deals. But, and I was limping around because uh, my knee was swollen up about two or three times the size it was supposed to be. I actually had my knee aspirated uh, at the training room that Saturday morning, tried to get the head coach to do it, but he's got a, he had a phobia of needles. Mm-hmm. So he saw the setup and he was out. But my team doctor aspirated, of course, student trainers and some of my athletes were all in and very excited to watch it. You know, me get my knee aspirated, and you know that was kind of a cool deal to do in the training room. You know, let everybody see how it's done. And yeah. my team doctor was a good teacher, so that was that. You know, kind of highlighted it too. And he was generous enough to do that. He would come up on Saturdays and help me evaluate athletes. He was amazing, great guy, but uh, still is. But I, uh, he wanted me to go home and ice and rest, like Stacy was uh, alluding to. When you have a big, you know, swollen knee, that's kind of what we recommend. Uh, I said, thank you. I'll try to be careful and proceed to work a volleyball tournament. Yeah. So okay. two, years, so two years ago, when I uh, when I first hurt my knee, uh, I, I was like that. I limped around the entire football season before I actually went to the doctor and, 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 yeah. and got it looked at. When and I tore my hamstring, I, I did that my last year. It was bad. It yeah, it was a struggle. Whole school year with his hamstring. Yeah, whole school year with my hamstring torn. It was stupid. Yeah. But hey, it's all good. It doesn't yeah. hurt. Now. Found out it was a nerve problem, not a muscle problem. So yeah, got that fixed with a four and a half hour back strong, surgery. It's not. Oof. Yeah, it doesn't hurt anymore. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we've taken care of a lot of questions just in this conversation we've had, and that's awesome. Um, so. I was going to ask this one, but you kind of you kind of gave some already. But do you have any other favorite memories uh, from our days at Carroll High School, other than what you already <laughs> mentioned? I know you got a ton, but pick pick one. All right, and, let me and, let me pick one it. that's that's good for little ears. They'll like yeah. this. Yeah. Okay, this was school related, but away from school. Yeah, I think that'd be fair. Yeah. Oh, I know where that After is. After a Saturday morning, they uh, freaking frack when Ann Rollo came to the house. Yeah. And you got to remember, I graduated college at 22. I graduated high school at 17. Yeah. Four years later, I'm out, 21, 22, just got married. We're young. We're, you know, y'all are 17 turning 18. Yeah. So there's really not. Was yeah, Raul is probably 18. There's not that much age difference between us at this point. No. And so no. I'm, you know, I've got a degree, but I'm still a kid. Uh, we had just gotten a little puppy and we're playing with the puppy and, you know, enjoying the puppy. And Stacy got back from uh Waterburger because we know that Corpus Christi is the intergalactic headquarters for Waterburger. Had a little bit, one of a, one of us, I don't remember which one, had a little bit uh, of our lunch left from Waterburger and it was a cheeseburger. Yeah. And they fed it to the little puppy. And the puppy scarfed yeah. down the cheeseburger as puppies do. Then we proceed to play with the puppy. Mm-hmm. And it was rough play like guys do. It was wrestling and oh, it was yeah, all yeah. on the floor and it was greatness. And I think I remember in the back of my brain somewhere hearing my wife say, please don't play with a puppy like that because he might. And at that time he might. I hear the word throw up and I see the puppy <laughs> throwing up cheeseburger. <laughs> Right as she said that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Perfect yeah. timing. Yeah. And of course, everybody jumps away. <laughs> you don't want to get thrown up dog cheeseburger on you. <laughs> and we're making sure the puppy's all right. Puppy was fine, by the way. Because it was still no. full. Like, he didn't even chew oh, it. Oh, he what? didn't chew. That's what we all did noticed. not chew it. Yeah. And we were laughing about it. And of course, we had a cleanup. You know, I had to get clean up. And I picked it up. And I, it as I do, I made an observation. <laughs> Part of the science guy in me. And the yeah. nerd in me, you remember what I said? Yeah, yeah. All it's right. still warm. It's still warm. <laughs> yeah. Three great words that we lived by and yes. left by for years. 
Yes. It's still laughed by that. It's still warm. It's still warm. Somehow yeah. that made it worse <laughs> and more disgusting. Yeah. And it was warm for being inside a dog. It wasn't warm for being cooked. No, no. It but being because it wasn't chewed, it looked like it was warm for being cooked. We yeah. could have wrapped it back up and sold it to somebody else. <laughs> Okay, and uh, please understand it was thrown away. Nobody ate it. Yeah, no, nobody <laughs> ate it. Although I think maybe somebody tried. Maybe it was paid. Yeah, it, yeah, it was a dare. But um, <laughs> yeah, that, that was, was that, that was, was one of my favorite memories of there. That was, uh, awesome. was like yeah, because it was, basketball in that front room on the little toddler yeah. set, and yeah, we didn't have the, a little toddler. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, guys, it, for the rest of the for the rest of the time that we were together there. That's what it was. Oh, it's still warm too. <laughs> oh yeah, every Everything, time. I bet it's still warm. Every time. Yeah. Uh, I've got one with another coach up here. I gave him accidentally, gave him some sunscreen that was expired, oh, was and he put it. I I go legs first, arms, you know, face last. He goes yeah. face first. So he, you know, we're getting ready to. We have to go to a meeting. We're out at Odessa. We're going to Rapid Stadium for a regional track meet. And we have to go with the shot putters because they have a meeting early to weigh the shot puts, to mm-hmm. certify them or whatever, you know, make sure the cannonballs are the right, I don't know, right size and throw them at each other. I don't know what they do. Yeah. You know, shot putters are their <laughs> own breed. But I was hanging out with the big guys, which was fun. We ate well, but I was hanging out with the big guys and, uh, oh, where was I going with this story? He puts it on his face. Oh, he puts it on his face and he gets this horrified look and he goes, is this what what is this that you're giving me is it old yeah I'm like, why and he goes it smells like uh cat urine <laughs> and he did not use the word cat urine he used yeah, a different yeah. word for that yeah i cleaned that up uh for our listeners yeah. but yeah and he was horrified well then you know i'm laughing i'm rolling around on the floor we're still trying to get ready and so then i decide to dig around in my bag and i find another and he wouldn't take it from me yeah, and this was, you know, it's like how old is this? Twenty something years later. Okay. Billy's telling me about it. Like, oh my god, that's <laughs> very old. Is so old. But it's oh, been around the bottom of my kit. It had been hot and cold. Yeah, we have yeah. temperatures up here that range from oh, 108 yeah. in the summer. In your car, it's worse. In the truck, and then I take the kid out in the cold, and we, you know, <laughs> soccer plays when it's 20. So yeah. it's gone from 20 to 108, so that can't be good for it. No. And it's old, old. Like, the store that sells it isn't even owned by the same people and not the same name. Oh, my God. They don't so even sell it generic anymore. brand. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's Iron Man. Brand, but... Yeah, Iron Man Triathlete. But sunscreen does expire. Oh, Just know blood. that. And I learned that you're supposed to use... I looked it up because I was still laughing about it. You're supposed to use about a tube or more of sunscreen every summer. I've had a tube of sunscreen for five years. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got a spray bottle I've been using for about yeah. two at least. Yeah. It, it does expire and go bad. So just, just so you know. <laughs> All right. I have, to, I have to go check it. <laughs> He's never borrowed any sunscreens. <laughs> no, he won't. I wouldn't either. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's still uh, warm. Oh, and that, wow. <laughs> he just kept yelling at me. The, a highlighted injury, and I'm, I don't mean to talk bad of it, and you will remember it. Do you remember when our mascot got hit? Oh, yeah. We had the girl in the suit going yeah. one way and the tiger head going the opposite way. Yeah. It was an yeah. incredible hit that made the highlight video. Yeah. <laughs> it did. But And the girl was okay. I think I remember she was all right. I thought but she it tore looked, ACL. Yeah. Well, that's, that is true. She did have an ACL. That was her. Because we had two that night. We had a player yeah. and the cheerleader. Yeah, that's right. That was double ACL night. Yeah, Yeah. because she because the next game she was on crutches. Yes, that is right. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, we had a had a tiger decapitated. Yeah. Yeah. The helmet. Yeah. The tiger head on that. Yeah. Came right off. It was hilarious. About your most unusual. You want my most unusual injury? Funniest. Give it. This is this is funny. Okay. (laughs) I've got a few, but I'll give you a, a good one. No, this, is the- this is the best, I think, over the time. And you'll want to keep this in there. I'm working at Berkner in Richardson. And it's a, it's a Saturday morning, I'm pretty sure, because it wasn't school. I'm sitting in my training room office, which is right off the gym. Mm-hmm. They're having 
basketball and volleyball, all the athletic practices are over, but they're finishing the drill team practice. And that was the thing at the school. Their drill team is very well known. Yeah. So big deal. So they're doing drill team out there. And I, I would take care of drill teamers too, because some of them were in athletics. But this girl walks in and mumbles. I had walked out because I knew somebody walked in. So I walked out the main training room part and she mumbles to me. And I can't tell what she's mumbling about. She kind of pointed at her face. And I'm thinking, if I lost my hearing, what's wrong with this girl? I don't get it. And her mom walks in right behind her. Mom happened to be coming up to pick him up or at the practice or whatever. And what she was trying to tell me is that she dislocated her jaw with her hat string. Wow. Because they had to do a little head snap and turn it. Yeah. And they had the string so tight that it acted like a fulcrum and it unhinged. I, I remember it very clearly. It unhinged the left side of her TMJ. Wow. So her jaw was really dislocated. And it yeah. went from a fall. It wasn't from a you know car wreck. Uh, that's kind of what you yeah. expect, yeah, or yeah. A, you know ATV something like that. Just this across was the chain. Hat yeah. string. She popped her hat to the right, and it pulled the left TMJ out of place. That's crazy. So, so my next step, she had braces. My next step was to tell mom to get ready to take her to her orthodontist. Mm-hmm. told her that I, I asked mom if she'd be okay if I put it back in, if I reduced it to relieve her pain. Yeah. And mom says, do you know how? And I said, yes, absolutely. I've done it all the time. Mm-hmm. And, and that was a little bit of a stretch. That was my yeah. first one. <laughs> I have since done it more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I knew the technique. You wrap your thumbs in gauze because you don't mm-hmm. want to be bit. You tell them, please don't bite you. And you press down on the back molars and pull forward. Yeah. And the jaw went in place, and she said, thank you. And she didn't want to go. She actually wanted to stay at practice and not go to the orthodontist. And we talked her out of that. Wow, yeah. Uh, no fracture. She was good to go. Uh, they recommended Advil and ice for a couple of days, and she was fine. So it was that, that is a very unusual injury for sure. I have never heard of anything like that. The, the uh, best advice I can give, Yeah. always keep learning. That's very, very important. Stay in the books. Yeah. You know, uh, network, get a bunch of friends that you trust so that you can learn things and bounce things off of each other. Okay. Yeah. And laugh a lot. Yeah. You know, keep, keep your sense of humor. You have to. Oh yeah. And you have the athletes and the coaches and the world's beating you down. Find a way to laugh a lot because in the end, it's really all kind of funny. Oh yeah. You were talking about your days at Berkner and, um, you know, I remember when I started my career, I went back. And I was working at Miller High School for seven years. Mm-hmm. And um, and then I just got this kind of wild hair, right? And said, I'm going to move to the Dallas area. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was 1998. Yeah. And I found a job in... Um, we were going to be in the same... We were going to be in the same district. Yeah, I was at Carrollton. That was going to be awesome. We were going to play each other. Yes. Football and I remember, once a year and everything else twice a year all the time. Yeah. And I remember I called you and I was telling you about it and I was like, this is awesome. and It's great. And then you were like, well, <laughs> moving to Bridgeport. And I was like, what? I was like, no way. And, um, but, but it was all good. Cause it was still not too far away and we right. had to use it a lot. Um, <laughs> but let me tell you what, the, one of the highlights though, cause I was really looking forward to like being in that same district, right. Where we could oh, play yeah. and stuff like that. Right. Um, fun. And so one of the highlights, though, of my career had to have been like in uh, it was 2012, 2013. Lone Star was finishing up its its round in 3A before they were jumping up. And uh, when I was working there and and we got to play each other in a playoff game mm-hmm. um, at Denton right. Braswell High School. Um, yep. I can't remember if it was girls or boys. It was a boys game. Boys. Right yeah. A boys basketball game. And um, I have a picture uh, that I had taken of me and you together that day. And then I put it in a side by side. I think it's on my Facebook somewhere. You'd have to scroll back really far, but I put it in a side by side of me, you and Renee on the field um, at Carroll. uh, Yeah. And I was just like, it's full circle, man. I was like, this is just one of the highlights of, of my career. That was a fun night. It really was. And we, and we, and we kicked y'all's butt and we kicked y'all's butt and sent y'all home. But, Sorry it, about was, that. It, it was terrible. Well, <laughs> I, I mentioned earlier to you in a text message, I'm having a lot of uh, right shoulder pain. Yeah, yeah. 
and right, you know, hand and wrist pain because I've got this it's ring that's from that big really, hair. really heavy. Yeah. Because the year after they kicked our tails, yeah, we were four A because they made a six A. We were still three A size. Yeah. yeah. But we moved up, didn't have to play Lone Star in the first round. Yeah. And got some uh, move ins that were of a great help and ended up winning the state championship. I remember that four A. Yeah. So yeah, we. They, they pushed us on to greatness, but I think they beat us by about 35 points. Well, that was definitely, like I said, a highlight. That was a of highlight. Of my career it was really good. And I it think it was uh, fun to meet your administrators. I remember from that night yeah. meeting their principal. Yeah. And yeah. I think she was afraid that I was trying to hire you away <laughs> yeah. because she talked so highly of you. And I, I agreed a hundred percent with everything she said. She was awesome. Yeah. Uh, I love that lady. She I wanted to her specific thing. Yeah. She wound up retiring a couple of years after I left uh, and came down here to Bandera. Yeah, she, she's uh, great. I went up there to her I remember retirement her, party. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. I remember her specifically saying uh, how valued you were at the school at Lone Star mm-hmm. and how much the kids and coaches love you. And that's a big deal. I mean, it's about relationships. That's the other oh, yeah. part that I would say in your jobs. You know, get your relationships yeah. with your you know, and, and keep it professional. If you're out working, keep it professional. But have a relationship with your student athletes. Have a relationship if you're a teacher with your students. Have a relationship with your coaches. It's much, much easier to work together. You know, you're on the same side. For sure. Because sometimes people will think, when you try to tell a coach that his starter is out, sometimes they think that we're against them, and that's really yeah. far from the yeah. truth. We're for... We're the biggest fan of that athlete and most of the time of that coach. Yeah. The yeah team for said, sure. We're supportive. We're, you know, we're trying to get that team to get to its highest level. We're trying to yeah. get that athlete to its highest level and yeah. take care of them along the way. You know, how many coaches have you taken care of through the oh, years? Yeah. yeah, lots. How many secretaries and custodians have you taken care of at school? Lots. Maintenance Still do it guys. today. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. There's one maintenance guy here. Uh, I started back up last week, right? And he's like, "You starting back up, Doc?" And I was like, yeah, "Sure, I am, man." I'm doing fine now. <laughs> and he's like, uh, "You got your machines out yet?" And I was like, "Yeah, come on, man. I know what you want. Let's go." <laughs> so, That's so, good. Yeah. So. I even took care of a Coca-Cola delivery guy for a few years. Sweet. But it's a small world because his athletic trainer, when he was in high school, was a friend of mine, and he yeah. came in and had a shoulder injury. I was watching him unload some uh, pallets. He was helping me unload some cases of Gatorade. Ironically, we're getting ready for a game. And I noticed his shoulder was bothering him. And I asked him if he had a little time. I did an evaluation and figured out he had some biceps tendonitis and told him if he would come by on his route, I'd work on his shoulder. Yeah. And he offered to pay me. And I'm like, I'm not going to pay you for taking care of a friend because we were truly friends. Mm -hmm. I'd gotten to know him. We had a relationship. We talked about he was a basketball player, so that was kind of the usual talk of our, you know, relationship. Yeah. But if he had been at the, you know, ranching, we would have talked ranching or roping or I've got two dentists here. I'll give you an example. And they're friends. Their kids went through and were athletes for us. But whenever I usually see her and we talk about grandkids, yeah. when I see him, we talk about roping because he's a big roper and that's his interest. Yeah. So, but you can right. find a way to talk to anybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and and a Coke guy is a good person to have a good relationship with. <laughs> yes. Coke delivery yeah, guy. We just saw him at the hospital about a month ago. I was up. Oh, yeah? And yeah. I jumped out of the car. It was a couple months ago. And I jumped out of the, well, I didn't jump. I don't jump anymore. But I got out of the car and went to see him. And yeah. so instead of going in to go to rehab, I was going over to the Coke guy. So I was yeah. like, what is he doing? <laughs> and realized that I knew him. I figured yeah. out who it was. She figured out who it was. She knows I know him. She's yeah. Mad. yeah. But, but yeah, don't, don't dismiss people that are in your life that are kind of in and out, like delivery mm-hmm. people and things like that. Mm-hmm. You never know. Especially your custodians. Custodians and maintenance, you right. know, I'll mention tell, that once again. Yeah. I tell my kids all the time. I said, don't ever, if you, I said, don't ever think that you're better than somebody else or that you shouldn't do something because you feel like it's not your job or right. whatever it is. Thank I said, because I said, because, you know, 
nobody that that is not the case you are no special no, no more special than anybody else here you just right. may have a different job and that's it yep. and so I, I always tell the kids that you know i said don't ever try and put yourself above somebody else like that because yep. when you do that then then you got you got to change your priorities you know because they're not right yeah, <laughs> so, yeah that's yeah. that's very shallow to give those somebody a hard time about where they live their name or their occupation yep. or yep. their education or their you know, education the other yeah. part yep. you know that's i'm very fortunate i have the opportunity to get a good education and be able to work in a job that i love to do mm-hmm. uh not everybody has those same opportunities i'm i realize it every day i'm very very fortunate yeah 100 percent. married to an awesome wife uh have an awesome son who's a coach I've got great grandkids. I mean, we're very blessed. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. So before we close this out and uh, and, and I finish up here, do you have anything else that you want to quickly talk about? Uh, I, I knew this was going to be a long one. Uh, we're, approaching, <laughs> we're approaching an hour. Uh, yeah. But uh, I knew it was going to be a long one. And I told people that last week. I said, you know, you're going to be in for a treat. I feel like it's going to be my longest podcast yet. But uh, you're going to be in for a treat, and I, and I think we've, we've delivered on that. But do you have any final thoughts, closing comments, anything like that before I close out? Uh, let's see. How would I close this? I think we're good. Uh, just yeah. remember, you spell Bearcats with a K. With a K. And it's still warm. Yes, it's still warm. <laughs> That's kind of good to remember during two days. Yes, for sure. Because yeah. you got to take care of those athletes. We need rain because it's still warm. So I see next time we have some pukers, I think I told you uh, earlier we were talking uh, in a text and you asked how the first day went. I was like, it wasn't too bad. Just a couple of pukers. You know, next time I, what I'll do is I'll just hey, can go tell one of my kids to go check and see if it's warm. So. <laughs> <laughs> and if they chewed. <laughs> and if they chewed, yeah. Oh, I've my done first... that before. I was like, dude, I was, I've done that before. <laughs> some of those pukers. I was like, hey, man, you know, if you chew that, it might be, you know, digest a little better. And I was like, holy cow. Okay. But, I told uh, my- I told my athletes, we always tell them to eat before they go to the workout because the ones that puke usually yeah. didn't have breakfast. Not always, but there's about a 90% chance that they're puking they didn't eat because yeah. they slept late and they didn't want a food and all the different reasons. Yeah. But you got it. I learned that early. You got to eat before you go work out your body. Oh, yeah. And before you go out, whether you're a student trainer or an athlete or a coach yeah. Yeah. or a reporter. I had to take a reporter that got sick from the heat on our media day one time. Yeah. That was a treat. Well, let me tell you, um, let me close this out. Um, we are right at the hour mark and let me tell you what I've, I've had the best time, uh, in this hour, just kind of reminiscing with you and talking about some of your career highlights, my career highlights, and just memories, uh, of things that we've, uh, you know, been able to share over the years, uh, in the time that we've known each other. And, uh, I know I've told you this, uh, before, uh, and I just want to say it again, but, you know, thank you uh, for taking me uh, and Renee, you know, uh, God rest his soul. But, you know, it, taking us in and teaching us the right way to be an athletic trainer, because th- there's a wrong way. And and you definitely taught us, taught us the right way. And uh, and we carry it over, you know, or I've carried it over into, into my practice for this is entering year 33. Um and so I, I can't believe that sometimes when I say that, right? But it's amazing. Uh, yeah, but I, I just want, I just, again, thank you so much for taking that time, caring for us and, and, and showing us, uh, you know, the right way to be an athletic trainer and, and you know, all the love, I, I, lots of love for you and Stacy, uh, because both of y'all were very instrumental uh, in my life growing up. Yeah, well, thank you all. I appreciate your kind words, and you know that we love you, too. Yeah. All right. Wow. Hey, well, thanks again for joining me. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll catch up with you again later. But uh, thanks again, and I uh, really appreciate you hopping on this with me and uh, giving me an hour of your time. Sounds great. Hey, I would love to do it again later on if you want. Okay, sounds good. Uh, all right. Talk to you later. Uh, good right. luck Bye-bye. this season. Thanks, Thank Rob. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow, guys, what an awesome way to start season two. I hope that you enjoyed that as much as I had 
fun recording it, right? So I'm so glad that y'all got to hear from my mentor and role model that started me on this journey 38 years ago. Yeah, that's right, 38. This is my 33rd year. I had four years of college and, and I had a couple years with him uh, in high school. So you uh, really a year and a half. But anyway, um, next week, be sure uh, to come back and listen because I'll have some more info and stories from the first week uh, of school. Well, maybe no, because we don't start till Thursday. This comes out on Wednesday, but I'll have some more info uh, for you uh, for the start of school and uh, volleyball. They, they already start scrimmages this coming week, so I'll have some scores for you and things. Uh, but thanks so much for listening to Ice Bath Baby. Uh, Be sure to leave us a rating in your podcast app and be sure to follow us on social media. And those links can be found in the show notes. So remember to be safe out there. And when in doubt, put that in an ice bath.